Welcome to Missoni Art. It's September and Marcy Dunn Ramsey is filling the gallery with her incredible paintings. Marcy's gone large this year. You're going to feel like you're walking into the water that she paints. You're going to feel like you're part of the geometries that she's been trying to capture that are present around us in the world. I've invited several friends, artists of the gallery, to be part of this exhibit. Michael Kahn, who captures again in his photographs very much the same sensibilities that Marcy is finding in the worlds that she paints. Rick Biscayer, who does this beautiful work in porcelain, and you feel like you are just diving into either the night sky or the blue waters that inspire him. And Shelley Robeson's elegant sculptures. She follows a line and takes it directly into the light. I think you'll find that all of these artists capture that sense of geometry and light and beauty that Marcy is trying to convey in the paintings. And yet there's a chaos present in everything too, where all of a sudden, all of that careful construction breaks into a, a very organic, almost chaotic feel. And that's reflected in Catherine Cox's cloud paintings. There's a lot to see in this show. This is not one you want to miss. So plan to come to the gallery. Our hours are going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as always. You're welcome to come during public hours. But if you feel the need to make a private appointment, you know we're happy to do that. And we'll do it any day that's convenient for you. But plan to come in person. This is a show you want to be able to walk through quietly. You want to be able to move into the paintings the same way that Marcy did when she created them. Hi, I'm Marcy Dunn Ramsey. Welcome to my exhibit called Geometries. This painting, which was on the cover of The Invitation, is the first one we're going to talk about. And um, the reason I was attracted to the, this image is because of the contrast between the energy lines coming down through the water of the reflected trees and the flat surface of the water with the water lilies on it. And I'm the very loosely painted and very uh, just reminiscent of, of lily pads. The other, the other thing that was interesting to me about this painting was the way the, the dark blue of the water changes to a transparent, shallower water level. And you can see the stones and the water lilies underneath. And you can also see my shadow right here where I'm standing and taking the picture. I like that part. I like knowing that I'm in it. So. Um, it has a lot of energy and a lot of contrast, and that makes it really interesting to me. This is a painting that I call Flutter, and it has nothing alive in it like butterflies or anything, but to me, the, uh, the forms in it were like wings. And I also call it Jaffe's painting because I, um, I have a neighbor who has a little boy who's the same age as my grandson, and I was giving him an art lesson on the dock in front of his aunt's house. And we were looking at the pickerel weeds and he, he was saying, what should I do? And I said, look at the shapes, just spend some time looking at the shapes and remember the shapes and then just close your eyes and make the shapes on your paper. And he did the most beautiful painting, the loosest, most brushy, and it was doing it in watercolor and uh, crayon, oil pastel. And it was great and I, it was so free. And I just remembered his gestures, and that's what I tried to recapture when I did the brushwork for this one, because it's kind of transparent, and some of it's thick, and some of it's thin, and some of it is, um, the, the, it's reminiscent of the act of fluttering. Um, and one of the things that I also really kind of hammered in to Jaffe was the idea of the negative spaces. And this one's just full of negative spaces, which are these little shapes in between the leaves and I love the way they don't it kind of obliterates part of the shape the line because it's light burning through and that happens in a lot of these paintings this year it happens in a lot of my paintings anyway but I don't care if it's not realistic and I don't care if it's not the way it actually shows up on the photograph I'm really looking for the gesture and I'm looking for the feeling this painting is called Parabola, and uh, the title of the show is Geometries. And I just, I was thinking about what is the commonality in all these paintings, 
And I remember being a kid. I, that comes up a lot when I think about my work, is how I felt as a kid. And I just loved geometry. I wasn't nuts about algebra, and I could do it, but it wasn't nearly as much fun as geometry, because I got to draw. I got to make these shapes. I got to figure out why a triangle is half of a rectangle. And then, when I started doing uh, more advanced math, I, I loved plotting graphs. So this parabola, you know, this great shape that comes across here, it reminds me of those plotting the graphs and, and how, also with COVID, yeah, we've been looking at a lot of graphs lately. So I, um, I kind of felt that that was what was going on in this piece and I simplified and simplified and simplified so that it's really down to the bare bones. And in this one, the light's burning through in a lot of these shapes as well. You can see where they kind of stop and start. And this one, for example, it's orange, then it's green, then it's orange again, and then it's blue. And they are, they're kind of vibrating because the color changes. And the, and the light that is coming through here is, I think of it as, uh, well, it's not real. It didn't, didn't look that way in the photograph, but it was something I wanted to show. I, I love the idea of burning something burning through. So that's what was going on here. And then you also have the dichotomy between, it's not really dichotomy, it's a contrast between the warm upper part of the painting and the cool lower part of the painting. And they're stretching and reaching and trying to connect. So in a way it's pretty psychological. It's not real. It doesn't look like anything you've ever seen, but it's very real to me. And it also makes me feel like I'm answering my own questions when I'm painting. And every artist does that. Why are you painting? I don't know, because it does something for me. It puts me in the right place. This painting is called Bounce, and I named it that because it had some kind of bizarre energy going in it, and I don't really know why, but things were snapping when I was painting. Um, the lines seemed to be really during a storm, you'll see the grasses snapping back and forth at each other. So that was what was happening in this. And, they, and again, you have the migrating color coming from the really warm gold to the cool, crazy green. And the white lights, it's, it's light coming through trees, but it has, they have a personality all their own. So, um, and this one, it's a happy painting. This painting is called Outreach. I'm sure I could think of a better name for it. I really chewed on it for a while, but what it reminded me of was the, the grasses are hanging down over the water and going this direction. Everything is going in this direction. And then the reflections are going in the opposite direction. And it's just sort of like the, you know what it's like? It's like good and evil. You've got the happy, beautiful, warm colors, and then you've got these kind of psychological, dark colors under here that are reaching out and trying to struggle in the struggle, the eternal struggle of good and evil. That's maybe too heavy, but I like it. I like, I like that idea of uh, contrast. So you have warm to cool, cool. You have these shapes and energy lines coming down. You have shapes and energy lines coming this way. And it's all about connecting. Right. This one's called Into the Blue. The reason I named it that is because I wasn't thinking about reflections. I wasn't thinking about making it look real. I was thinking about how these colors are melting and turning into blue. So as they descend through the painting, they become more and more married to the coolness that's coming up through the painting. So there's this thing going on like this. But I also love the light because the light was like just dancing light that was popping up all over the place in this painting, right? This painting is really big. I was calling it the big one, Big Ed or something, because it was just, it was a pain to stretch and it was a pain to paint and it was a pain to handle and get into the truck. We had to carry it separately in the truck to get it in here. But it's just, I just loved painting it. I felt like I was swimming. I felt like I was enveloped in the paint. I just felt such a part of it. I love painting on this scale. It's very inconvenient on a physical set, on a physical level, but as a painter, it's just wonderful. So I'm probably gonna do more of these big ones. One of, one of the reasons I tried to go so big with this painting is that I um, was inspired by an older woman 
even older than me, which is hard to imagine. And she painted until, until she was 90 years old. And she would stretch her canvases on the wall of her studio without stretcher strips, just tack them up on the wall and then go to town on them and listen to jazz. And she would go into her painting while she was doing that. And I always thought that was, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to try that technique of uh, doing something so big that you're part of it. And that, that happened with this one. And it was really uh, a spiritual experience to get so far into something. This piece is called Ovoids. I called it that because I wanted it to be in keeping with the idea of geometry, because they really are um, simple geometric shapes when you get right down to it. What I was also thinking when I was doing this, and it was on this large scale, they look like little groups of conversations, little groups of people having conversations, or and it, all of a sudden it occurred to me it was like a Zoom conference because you have all these little clumps of people all over your screen and everybody is trying to have a meeting, but it's not like being in a room with one person you know, with all the people in the room. So it was, that's why I called it conference call because it is all these, all these little units are connected, but they're also separate, kind of like human beings. So that's the metaphor here. Why did I call this string theory, you may ask? It came from a photograph that was, had almost no color and it was very indistinct. And what I loved about it was I wanted to do something with all different shades of celadon and green, and this lent itself to that idea with all these vertical shapes intermingling with these horizontal shapes and little, little splotches of, you know, they're reminiscent of leaves, but they're not really leaves. The color is so calm. When I was painting it, I just felt so happy <laughs> but um and then these verticals they're not very carefully done they're really just feelings of verticals so uh that that was the energy behind this and then they all kind of trail off into these little reflections that are almost like seaweed okay this painting is called circle dance and as you can see it has a lot of energy in it it is just it was a painter's dream and a painter's nightmare because there's so much going on and there were so many different shades of green. And I was really trying to find out, I didn't, I stopped counting after a while, but I used a lot of different color to make it look as green as possible. And then it needed, it really needed some warm accents. So I kind of gave it a focal point right here. And then these guys, the little koi fish going across the top, they're just like, like Christmas lights. But to me, I love the, um, embryonic quality of the water and the shapes that the light forms against the dark, dark green. This is one of the other big paintings. It's very reminiscent of the one in the front of the gallery called Parabola. This one is called Bisect. And again, I used a geometric term because it had, it was, a, it was, came from a photograph again, but I didn't really even care about making it look like the photograph. What I was interested in was the circular shapes and the way they were describing arcs that were divided and bisected by these energy lines that were coming from all over, but it's almost electric in the way they intersect. And again, we have burning light coming through the negative spaces. And the, this time it's not going from warm to cool, it's going from cool to cooler. And uh, this blue at the bottom, I'm just so happy with that blue because it was almost pink, it was so blue. These little paintings are gouache studies. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my process. When I, uh, when I go out in the kayak or when I go out by the river, I look for things that light my fire, that turn me on. I don't know why, I, don't, I often don't even know why until I get back in, in the studio and look at what I've got. But I find these little sections of a, paint, of a photograph and then do a color study from it. And that, that tells me where to go. And so some of these studies are very similar to the paintings that I do from them. Some of them are completely different. So uh, it, depends on, on, it depends on how much is going on. 
I really like simplifying things. So some of them, like this is the study for this painting that I was just talking about. And it's a lot more complex. It's a lot more realistic in a lot of ways. But it's, um, but it led me, that led me to do this. When I start doing the painting, I don't really even look at anything. I might look at three or four energy lines and then just go in and go to the painting. So these things are, are just like the starter engines that get, get things going um, before I do something large. Thank you for joining us for Marcy's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have putting it together. We have a lot of new things happening this fall. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them, but I encourage you to please register for our email newsletter. That's the fastest, easiest way to learn the new things happening in the gallery. We have leased a new space on Cross Street. We will be featuring all of our gallery artists on a rotating basis in our new location, and we will be using our High Street location for our exhibitions. This is a very exciting time for us. We feel we'll be able to serve you in a much more effective way so that when you come to Masoni Art, you'll be able to see all of your favorites at any time. Once again, a reminder, we'll be following CDC guidelines. So if it's calling for masks, please wear them. If you want to schedule a private appointment, of course, we're happy to do that at any given time. Although our hours are posted and listed, we encourage you to call us and set up an appointment. I'm happy to make myself available at any time that's convenient for you. Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon.